Life in Hyrule can be very tough. There are many dangerous creatures and monsters roaming the lands. And so, throughout the years, the people living in these beautiful but also terrifying lands had to adjust to the world around them. As we all know, this led to many different cultures developing in the world of Hyrule, with each one of them being special in their own way. And one place that has always been perfect for sustaining life is the sea. This vast body of water is filled with all kinds of creatures, allowing all kinds of other animals to flourish, including Hylians. And so today, we will take a look at quite a special place, Lurlin Village. Now we have all seen the vast plains of Hyrule Field, the wonderful Korok forests, and the impressive settlements made by the Goron, Soras, and Ritos. However, very few people in the world have stumbled across this small village that's located in East Nakluda. It has its own culture, traditions, and way of living in this diverse and immense world of Hyrule. Now this place is known as a seaside village, surrounded by palm trees, a beautiful ocean, and steep cliffs that overshadow it. There isn't really much to do or see here, aside from visiting the market, doing some gambling, or staying at the beautiful inn. Overall, life here is peaceful, and the people who live here have a lifestyle that's based around the sea and climate around them. All of this makes them quite different compared to the other settlements found in the world, and you can notice this as soon as you arrive there, with one thing standing out, the architecture. Almost everyone here lives in a simple wooden fisher's hut, which is something we don't see in other parts of Hyrule. However, some of you might be wondering, why is this the case? Well, according to the villagers, it's because they are built for the specific climate found there and with the limited resources they have. As you can see, almost all of them are quite small, use a palm tree in the structure itself and are raised up from the ground. Now, they most likely did this in order to be safe from the elements and also to use as little resources as possible. Overall, this part of Hyrule doesn't have dense forests. They only have palm trees, which limits them in certain ways. Aside from that, a house like this allows the wind to pass through the building, and the leaves above from the palm tree block the sun, which helps with keeping the house cool. But even though it seems like life is hard for them because of all of this, it actually works well with the climate found here. And in the end, all of this made the village more iconic compared to a lot of other places seen in the vast lands of Hyrule. Now the inhabitants of this village are Hylians with a darker skin, which is probably because of the harsh sun they endure day in day out when riding the waves of the sea. They are for the most part humble fishermen after all, selling and exporting their goods to everyone in Hyrule. From dawn till dusk they are out there facing the waves in order to catch fish to feed their family and create an income. And so, in this beautiful village, you will see some of the most interesting fish dishes in the entire world world. A classic one is the seafood rice ball. And as we found out, it's quite simple to make. All you need is Hylian rice and any type of fish, crab or sea snail. But this isn't all. You also come across these beautiful fire roasted porgies made by this fisherman named Armies who has years of experience with the wild waters found around the village. He told us that he uses this boat, which was designed after a whale, and a fishing harpoon or net to catch these fish every day. Overall, their technology isn't very advanced, and they used all tools and techniques that were used by their ancestors. For example, they don't actually use a sailing boat, but a normal rowing boat when heading out to sea. Even though there are rafts found near the village that have sails, none of the boats in the village itself have them. But they compensate for this with one quite clever trick, which helps them find a lot of fish in this huge ocean. Army said he uses the seagulls in the sky to find good fishing spots. Because they have a tendency of flocking over certain places where fish can be found, and in rare cases, even sunken treasure. Aside from that, the people in the village said that Lurlin Village has relations with Hateno Village due to them having a long history of fishing in Hateno Bay and Zora's Domain via the Lanaru Sea. They do this because they provide both settlements with certain fish, and there's a reason for this. 
The Hateno villagers are farmers, and Hyrule and Zora generally prefer to live and fish in fresh water. And so they are able to build a big network of fishing locations, and also settlements where they can sell their wares. But there are some locations which they fear. Like Eventide Island, which is shrouded in mystery, and so there are many legends about it. And no one even dares to go near it. With their traditions and culture built around the sea that has provided for generations. They aren't rich in any way, lead a relatively primitive life, and don't meddle with any other people. However, after meeting some of the folks living in this village, we learned about some of the tribe's darker history as well. According to some tribe members, during the Age of the Burning Fields, which was the time period after the Great Calamity, the waters near Lurlin Village were plagued by a giant water octorok, which terrorized the village fishermen. This was a very challenging time for the tribe, because they couldn't go out to fish anymore because of the immense threat found in the sea. But according to this legend, the Zora Prince Sidon heard of the village plight and left Zora's domain to deal with the beast. The Octorok was said to be as large as a mountain and had swallowed many would-be heroes. And it appeared Princess Sidon himself would meet this gruesome fate too when he was swallowed by the beast whole. But he managed to kill the beast by attacking it from the inside with a spear killing it and ending the threat that it posed to Lurlin village. This was a very common story that we heard in the village, and it's an important part of their history, even though we aren't sure if it's all true. Now as a result, Lurlin village survived and is peaceful over a hundred years after the Great Calamity, and there are no signs of any giant octorocks. And so this story of Prince Sidon's heroism became a heroic tale passed among the villagers under the title, The Prince Who Slew the Fell Octorock. Now this legend actually had a big impact on the Lurlin society, because this is what created the good relationship between the Zora and the people of Lurlin. Thanks to this, according to some fishermen that we talked to, they provide porgies, razor claw crabs, iron shell crabs, and blue shell snails to the Zora, while the Zora provide freshwater fish, sneaky river snails, and bright eyed crabs. And this is how they became trade partners and allies. But there are also some other stories in the village that are shrouded in complete mystery like the Palmora Ruins. And there's one local villager known as Garini that has tried to solve the mystery for ages. According to him, the stone monument bore instructions to summon some sort of ancient shrine from underground. And one interesting thing you could see at night is that the letters on this stone monument glow, which makes it easier to read. However, when we visited the village, they still hadn't solved this mystery. They weren't able to give us any extra information on it. But one thing was certain, the people of Lurlin never made these old structures and walls. So there must have been some other group of people that ended up creating all of this a long time ago. And similar structures can be seen in other parts of Hyrule, but they now lay in ruins as well. So this will most likely remain a big mystery for the people of Lurlin. But this doesn't matter to them. They are simple folk that seek a life where they can ride the waves and enjoy the bounties of the sea. It has allowed them to really thrive in the hostile world of Hyrule, and so they have become one of the most interesting villages seen in the entire world. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe and everything and, and show me love, click like, click subscribe, click bell button, please help out Papa Wiley, please.